In today's video, you will learn the biggest mistakes you could be making with your UI. And be sure to stay tuned because later in this video, we will be telling you about a giveaway we're doing on Discord and how you can actually preview skill cap content for free in our brand new course guides channels. Let's face it, add-ons have become one of the most controversial topics in Retail WoW. And many players believe that in order to PvP, you need a million crazy add-ons, with air horns blasting sounds in your ears, or a robot voice telling you someone is casting Polymorph. But then there are players like Peekaboo who can get high rated on every class while barely using any add-ons at all. So what's going on? It's no question that add-ons are powerful and can change the way you play. But what we need to remember is that any tool is only as strong as the person using it. You can't expect to simply download a bunch of add-ons and instantly become a better player without knowing how to use them. What we see these days is players cluttering their UI with a million different add-ons and then wondering why PvP is so hard to follow. And so one of our goals will be to make sure you not only have every add-on you need, and more importantly, what you don't need, so that you can avoid game-losing mistakes. And don't just assume that because someone is high rated that their UI must be good, because there are plenty of examples of rank 1 players who have very questionable UIs. Some players get caught into the trap of thinking that because they are playing good enough with a bad UI means it must be working, without realizing that it could be even better by taking a few extra steps and fixing their UI. That's why when we made the skill cap UI, we did it with the goal of it working for everyone. It's designed to be minimalist, having everything you would need to get 1800, gladiator, or even rank 1. And even if you don't like one of the add-ons we've included, you can disable them as needed or substitute your own. Right now, you can download it for free on our Discord server. And if you are a skill cap member, you can even get one free VOD review every month, which includes getting feedback on your UI. This might sound like a hot take, but there are really only two add-ons you need for PvP. Gladius, which you need to track diminishing returns while making arena frames easier to see, and then Omnibar to track interrupts and cooldowns. Why are these two essential? Because they allow you to see information that you can't track by yourself, like diminishing returns and enemy cooldowns. These add-ons will be useful no matter what spec you play. But wait a minute, isn't Weak Auras the most overpowered add-on of all time? Yes, but let's get to that later. For now, let's look at Gladius, which is one of the two add-ons you truly need. There's a reason why Gladius has been so popular for over a decade, because it helps reliably track CCDRs, which is something everyone needs to do, yes, even including healers. Everyone knows by now that damage plus CC is always going to be better than damage by itself, and nothing feels worse than waiting for diminishing returns to fade and getting ready to set up your burst, only to see your solo shuffle partner reset DRs for no reason. Look here at this demon hunter who is tracking DRs with S Arena, but the CC icons are getting overlapped by bigger buffs and debuffs on the left. This means if they want to use their stun, then half of the time they will be taking a complete gamble, not knowing whether DRs are reset. This warlock is doing a better job tracking DRs with Gladius, but for whatever reason has an entirely separate DR tracker overlapping the health bars. There is absolutely zero reason for this redundancy, so you should avoid this as well. And in more extreme cases, some players chose to play without Gladius or any other way to track DRs. This not only hurts them, but also their teammates, because they have no clue whether DRs are reset. This is why you need to be checking Gladius DRs first before pushing for CC to make sure it will be its maximum duration. You need to be extra careful with stuns since many classes rely on stun setups in order to deal pressure and even survive. Now we know some of you like to play with Gladius X because it allows you to track enemy cooldowns in the same frame, but doing this means you have to check one, two, or even three places to see if an interrupt is ready. So unless you can move each eye individually, there will be some lag in getting the information you need. In order to track CDs, most players install Omnibar, but here another common mistake is made. Like Gladius, this has been one of the most popular arena add-ons over the last decade, but even experienced players like Thuy here make a common mistake once it's installed. Notice that he is tracking offensives, defensives, CC, and potentially even interrupts in the same place. Our smartest viewers already know why this is an issue. Imagine going to a restaurant and instead of the main sides and drinks being separated, everything was instead just jumbled together in one giant disorganized list. How do we fix this? First, we need to make separate bars for each type of cooldown you want to track, which is something even Peekaboo does, keeping interrupts isolated on their own bar. Peekaboo is known for having a minimal UI, and even he takes this extra step. Then, we need to be selective on what we track, making sure we are only tracking the right abilities. Notice here that this warlock is tracking almost every single ability in the arena, and even worse, it's being overlapped with scrolling text. Knowing what is worth tracking can be confusing. This is why we highly recommend going to our PvP add-ons channel where we have a document of every ability you actually need to be tracking. 
Having a separate bar for interrupts is crucial, since we all know there's nothing more challenging these days than landing casts, which is why it's pretty unfortunate to see clips like this, where this player doesn't even have Omnibar installed and their own cast bar is being hidden by their pet abilities, which of course makes it almost impossible to fake interrupts. Omnibar is also one of the most convenient ways to outplay your opponent, whether it's predicting upcoming CC or at an advanced level being able to recognize who has defensive cooldowns missing so you can make better decisions on when to swap. Now, of course, you can also track cooldowns with nameplates, which isn't bad by itself, but there is one big problem. The moment a player is off screen, you then have zero information about their cooldowns. There is also the possibility of tracking way too much with nameplates, which again adds unnecessary clutter to your screen, while making it even harder to find the information you need with a quick glance. So, what is the best way to actually use nameplates if it's not for cooldowns? Some players will use nameplate add-ons to track all of their debuffs, which you can simply do with the Blizzard UI itself, Whatever path you take to monitor debuffs, you need to be careful, because as Snoopy pointed out in one of his VOD reviews, tracking too many debuffs on too many targets can once again make it impossible to actually tell what's going on. Keeping your nameplates clean is probably the number one way to get a clearer view of the arena. After all, the main purpose of nameplates in the first place is to track enemy positioning, even beyond line of sight. This is especially important as a healer, since occasionally glancing at enemy nameplates is what allows you to avoid CC. If you see a white nameplate suddenly sprinting towards you, you know a priest fear might be coming, giving you time to outplay if possible. Healers can also use a separate nameplate add-on for friendly players only, which we showcased in a recent video. This makes it easier to track your teammates' positioning in solo shuffle as they line of sight you across the map. The only other thing you might want to track on nameplates are defensive cooldowns, which you can conveniently do with flyplate buffs. If you are a DPS and see a defensive CD up, you can make easy and effective swaps to continue pressure on nearby targets. Once again, if you want a pre-configured profile for flyplate buffs that tracks every important enemy defensive cooldown, be sure to head over to our Discord. You'll just need to manually configure the most critical debuffs unique to your class, like Flame Shock as an Elemental Shaman. Otherwise, big debuffs can also be used to track defensives too, and so much more. This single add-on is incredibly lightweight and solves a bunch of key problems all at once. If you are a healer and not using big debuffs, you're making a huge mistake since it makes it harder to dispel CC quickly. Notice here how small the Psychic Scream icon is on this druid's raid frames, which forces his rogue to sit the full fear, unable to stop the mass dispel with a kick. By contrast, if you watch high-rated healers, nearly all of them use big debuffs, which allows them to dispel quickly. Not only does it mean their team will do more DPS, but it's also good defensively since it allows their partners to interrupt important spells or use utility to stay alive. Big debuffs is also important for seeing non-dispellable debuffs like stuns on your party frames. If you see your partner is stunned by a rogue or warrior, then you can anticipate that they might be under pressure soon. Just be sure to enable the setting to redirect all debuffs so that everything becomes more visible in your raid frames. You should also take the additional step to increase the buff limit on raid frames, which makes it easier to track HOTS and other friendly buffs. And even if you aren't a healer, you should still be using big debuffs too. A common complaint about the Blizzard UI is that it doesn't clearly show important buffs, but that's exactly the issue big debuffs solves because it automatically shows important buffs or debuffs directly on the target frame and even on enemy nameplates. Another big problem big debuff solves is leaving gaps in CC. This is actually a bigger deal than many players realize. By leaving even a one second gap in CC, kill windows can be instantly shut down by a quick defensive cooldown. But by using big debuffs or even Gladius, it becomes much easier to see exactly how much time is remaining on any applied CC, allowing you to time your chain CC more precisely, minimizing gaps and making your setups twice as effective. At this point, we can already hear someone typing in the comments about how broken Weak Auras is and how it can do anything that other add-ons can do. And we agree, Weak Auras is overpowered. Some players even have entire UIs that are built around multiple custom Weak Auras. But does this mean you should try and do the same? Probably not, unless you want your target frame to do this every game. For 99.9% .9 of players, Weak Auras just needs to do two things. Number one, if you have any important procs or spells that you want to track more carefully, then a simple Weak Aura can do the trick. But some procs are already baked into the Blizzard UI itself, so consider redundancy to avoid clutter. The only other thing Weak Auras really needs to do in PvP is alert enemy cooldowns. Whether it's the Mess Weak Aura pack or our Skill Cap package, Weak Auras is an effective way to react to enemy cooldowns, especially when you enable sound cues. This also allows you to only track most enemy cooldowns with Weak Auras, making it easier to compartmentalize enemy offensives into a dedicated section of your screen and prevents the need to track them anywhere else, making it easier to react accordingly whenever an enemy offensive is used. But just like any other add-on, Weak Auras can create clutter, and the only reason to install an extra add-on or import a new Weak Aura is to actually use it. And before we go, we have some good add-on practices to follow and some more mistakes to avoid. 
For one, try not to overlap any UI element. While this player might seem to have a well-balanced UI, you can see that their target frame is in the top right corner of their screen, overlapping their buffs and debuffs. The simple solution would be just to move it somewhere more central. Another big mistake is redundancy. While sometimes it can be good, other times it is pointless, like this demon hunter who has two separate arena frame add-ons for some reason. We've also seen players seem to ignore the strength of the focus frame. Here, this player has a focus frame, but no focus cast bar. You might think using focus frames are useless since arena frames and arena 1-2-3 macros exist, but the real benefit of having a focus frame in the first place is to isolate a single target, keeping it in the peripheral to act quickly with a CC or interrupt. Of course, not every UI has to be the same, but there is a reason why many high-rated players actually have very similar and even sometimes minimalist UIs. Sometimes you will find creative solutions to ability tracking with the Blizzard UI itself. Look at this player who is tracking their cooldowns on one side of their party frames with the in-game edit mode, and then their teammates' cooldowns on the other using Omni CD, which is another add-on we'd recommend for intermediate to advanced players. Alright guys, before we wrap up, you should know that we're giving away the War Within Epic Edition. To enter for a chance to win, simply fill out a form linked in our Discord server. And now you can actually preview skill capped content for free in our brand new course guides channel. So if you want to learn the best opener and arena for your spec, be sure to visit our Discord class guides to get a quick tutorial. And if you like what you see, we literally have hundreds of hours worth of content just like it at skillcap.com, where you can enjoy thousands of videos risk free and even get one free VOD review per month for a limited time. We're so confident that our guides work that we guarantee you can gain at least 400 rating just by using our service. So what are you waiting for? Be sure to visit our Discord today and click the links below to learn more about everything we have to offer. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.